to session 11 of Complexity Explorer's MESA tutorial, Agent-Based Modeling in Python. In this session, uh, agents are going to determine from the potential neighbor cells they could move to, which one will provide them the greatest welfare. To do this, is get us going to get a little involved as we're going to create five helper functions uh, as we look through each of our neighbors to determine which is the best spot to move to. Let's get started. First, open up your Google Colab or other development environment. Well, make sure your dependencies are imported and critically that, you have, uh, that your instance is connected to your sugarmap.txt file. All right, next, we got our resource classes right, uh, of sugar and spice. Uh, and these are fairly simple where they grow one unit of sugar or spice uh, for each step. Uh, then we have our trader agent. We'll be working uh, for this lesson. Right, we'll be working on part two of our move function, determine which move maximizes our welfare. And we have our model class, which instantiates our models and then calls each of the agent's uh, step functions, uh, which in this case is just move for traders. And we instantiate an instance of our model. Uh, uh, and then based off last time, uh, where we printed out our position and neighbors, uh, it all seems to still be working. So. Then we go on to part two, where we're again going to use list comprehension uh, in order to assess the value uh, or the which neighbor maximizes uh, an agent's welfare. All right, so we're going to use uh, list comprehension again. And we're going to, if you remember from last time, neighbors is a list of tuples that gives the location uh, for each of the neighbor cells that the agent can move to. All right, so we're going to uh, iterate through each of uh, each of those positions, and then we're going to add a helper function that's going to calculate the welfare uh, for each of those grid cells where we have to uh, get the amount of sugar and spice in there, and then for each agent's unique attributes, uh, determine uh, which one is best for them. So to do this, we have to start with a helper function. This is going, we're going to call this calculate welfare, and it'll be part of our trader class, so it'll be self.calculate welfare. And then we're going to pass in um, uh, a couple variables. So, uh, and this is we're going to change this a little bit over this lesson. But first, for now, we'll just start with how much sugar and how much spice the agent has, right? And then uh, we're going to iterate uh, for the position right, in our neighbors, right? So neighbors is a list of tuples with each position, all right? So we just iterate through those tuples, uh, and then for each of those, we calculate uh, the welfare. So now uh, we're going to put our helper function uh, uh, above our move function. Right? Uh, for me, this just helps uh, me keep my code organized so I know where to look for things. Uh, later on, I'll add a couple more comments to make sure I, I can easily split up where my main functions for my trader are, where my helper functions are. Now we're going to create our function. Calculate welfare self, right? Uh, sugar and spice. Remember, self is part of Python syntax. Uh, uh, just to identify that it is part of this uh, class. Okay, and then we're going to add some comments. Uh, in this case, I'm going to make sure I know where this uh, function kind of fits for my trader agent. Right? Uh, part 2 self.move. If you're doing more formal programming, you do things like uh, state specifically uh, the arguments, you know, what type of data structure it is, int, float, etc., data type it is, right? and then what it returns. Uh, for the purpose of this uh, this tutorial, we're just going to make sure that our code is more readable. Now, to determine our welfare, we're using this thing called the Cobb uh, Douglas function. It gives you the output for each varying input of sugar and spice to determine which one's the best output. If you're interested in the Cobb Douglas function, we'll put this link in the notes so you can take a look at it. All right, now, that link shows you the function or the generalizable form uh, for because we're using it for a specific instance, right? in this case, uh, sugar and spice landscape and a trader with metabolism, uh, we can use the uh, uh, functional form. Right? So first to do this, we need to calculate the total resources that the agent has. Right, so we'll create one called M total, so the metabolism uh, total, what's the agent's total metabolism? Right, and so this will be their, uh, what the agent has for their sugar 
uh, and their spice. If you remember from our initiation, each agent is unique, right? A critical factor of agent-based modeling is that, that you have a heterogeneous uh, or diverse population. All right, so once we get their unique uh, metabolism for sugar and spice, which will help them determine uh, which cell uh, and the amount of sugar and spice they have there, which one they value more, right? Uh, then we could just uh, plug that into our Cobb Douglas uh, in its functional form. Right? So this is going to be sugar raised to the exponent. the amount uh, so the amount of sugar they have raised to the exponent of their metabolism for their sugar divided by the total metabolism multiplied by our spice uh, again raised to the exponent uh, of their metabolism spice uh, divided by their total metabolism and this will provide them with a uh, with a float Right, uh, where the higher the value, the more valuable that particular cell block is. Okay? But so far, we're only passing in their uh, the amount of sugar and spice they have, uh, and we'll add in the specifics of the cell in just a second. Okay, but this gives us our Cobb Douglas functional form. As we wrote a helper function uh, with quite a bit of code, all right, we now want to test this to make sure there's no syntax errors uh, and that we're getting back what, what we expect. So we'll add a print statement welfares. Run a function, it turns red, so we got a syntax error in here somewhere, right? Uh, and I added in an extra bracket uh, into my list comprehension statement. That's fairly easy to get that. And now we run it. Okay, and sure enough, we get a list, right, uh, uh, of our, um, uh, of or the return of our Cobb Douglas function uh, because it's just using what that agent has for their sugar and spice amount at that time, right? It's uh, the list is just the same uh, based off the number of neighbors that they can potentially move to, right? So now we got a couple helper functions right, where we're going to add to their sugar the amount of sugar for the position that they're iterating in. Now, in this case, this is going to seem a little bit verbose uh, because we're making uh, two helper functions one, get sugar amount. And another one called get sugar or get uh, sugar, and then the same for spice, and that's because later on uh, we're going to use uh, these helper functions multiple times. All right, uh, just remember because we've written out this whole code beforehand uh, and optimized it a little bit, right, we'll, uh, uh, it, it's going to seem a little bit cleaner than the actual process of coding. Where there's lots of iteration. Right, and you make choices that later on you might have to try and uh, change because it's not what you want. So, but we're going to add two helper functions, right? So, get sugar amount and get spice amount. This take in one argument uh, position, right? And then this is going to be a helper function to a helper function, right? Uh, since it supports calculate welfare. So, uh, per my own particular coder, uh, coding dynamic, so I can identify my functions, I'm going to put this one uh, 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 as the these functions above are is occupied by others and calculate welfare. Uh, so we we'll create uh, you know, first get sugar amount. That takes one argument pos, which is a tuple that has your uh, grid coordinates, your x and y uh, for a specific position. Add some comments because uh, it's you know getting become a pretty involved uh, code. I want to make sure I could uh, we could go through it or somebody else could go through it and understand what we did. All right, I'm going to say where it's moved or where it's used at, at least at this point. And again, in a future session, uh, uh, we'll use we'll be able to reuse these uh, these functions for other uh, aspects uh, based off the uh, agent's interaction with both uh, uh, sugar and spice is that it has to consume it after it determines uh, which one uh, is the best. And again, you don't do this typically right off the bat. It takes a, a couple, 
your coding is very much iterative. Uh, so you, particularly you got a complex model, it may take you a couple times to get it the way uh, you want it, iterating through and optimizing your agents. So for this one, we're gonna uh, we gotta identify if it's a sugar patch. All right, so we're gonna create another helper function called get sugar. All right, that we'll uh, use later on. Uh, in addition to this function, right? And then we gotta, so we gotta confirm: is it actually a sugar patch? So, is it a, if it's a sugar patch, right? We need to return the amount of sugar uh, that is in that patch. Uh, so, in our sugar object, so that way we can assess uh, its welfare. Okay. And if you remember from our sugar uh, uh, agent class that has an attribute called amount, hence why we're doing uh, sugar patch dot amount, right? So we got to get the sugar agent object, right, and then get its attribute sugar patch, uh, which will be dot amount, right? If it isn't a sugar patch, so we just return zero. Right? So now that we have that, we need to create our helper function uh, get sugar. So again, def dot get sugar self because it's part of uh, Python syntax and it's part of the trader class. Right, uh, and then uh, the position as the one argument we pass in. And then some comments to make sure we know what this function is doing. Make our code more readable for both us uh, and for others. So now, uh, just like in our neighbors, we have to get all the contents of that cell so we can figure out which one's the sugar patch uh, and uh, which one's the spice patch. Right? And there shouldn't be any other agents uh, unless it's the cell that work, that the agent is currently in. So we use Python's embedded function of self.model.grid, right? So we point to uh, our attribute of our model, uh, our grid, which instantiated our uh, space. And then we use the function get cell list contents, right? Which takes one argument, our position. Right. This will return a list of Asian objects, right, that are in that uh, multi-grid, right, uh, and then we iterate through those objects, uh, and if uh, the type of the agent is sugar, uh, remember you gotta make sure that uh, S is capitalized. Right? That's how we determine that it's a the uh, sugar class. Then we want to return uh, that agent. And then in our get sugar amount function, uh, we uh, that'll become the sugar patch variable, and then we just uh, access its dot amount attribute. If it's there is no sugar agent, we just return none, right? So in our sugar amount, that would return, uh, a, you know, effectively a false for is it a, if it's a sugar patch and return zero. Okay. So now we've linked these various functions together, right? Uh, for sugar, so that way we could treat the amounts of sugar. Uh, so our agents can calculate the welfare. Now we need to do the same things for spice. Right? Uh, so since we kind of got the structure here, I'll just start with git spice uh, self dot pos, add some comments. And then follow effectively uh, the same pattern as I did previously, right? But instead of using uh, sugar, I'll be using spice, right? Now there's definitely multiple paths to the same outcome, uh, and uh, if you were coding this, you might make choices uh, that uh, whether you want sugar or spice becomes a variable, uh, so you have less functions, for instance, right? Uh, in this case, uh, we are not doing that, but the the point is there's just multiple uh, options uh, when you're coding, right, and everybody has their own style. There's always trade-offs between readability, uh, uh, lines of code, you know, uh, uh, and efficiency. Right. So again, we use the get the cell contents that returns a list of agent objects, uh, or uh, then we iterate through that cell. If the type is agent is spice, we return the agent. If not none, right now we need that uh, to be called by our get spice amount, right, which uh, takes the you know, self uh, argument and pos, 
for position. So then we create our comments. And all this is going to look pretty reflective uh, to our um, uh, get spice or get sugar amount at get sugar. Uh, and then we have our spice patch. Now uh, we'll use uh, our embedded. Uh, we call our uh, get spice, right? Uh, and then um, if the spice patch is an instance. Or if it is a spice patch, right? So uh, if uh, the get spice uh, returns something other than none, right, then we'll access that spice agent's uh, amount attribute and return that to our model, which will be uh, an int, right, that gets fed into our calculate uh, welfare parameter, right? So that amount is used to calculate our Cobb Douglas function, uh, which then produces a value, right? So our agent will have a list. Uh, of uh, uh, of values for each of their neighbors to do it. So to be clear, here's our amount function, right? Uh, inside our sugar class, or amount attribute, sorry, inside our sugar class. Okay, uh, so now, right, uh, we can print our welfare and see if those uh, numbers vary based off the amount of sugar and spice uh, uh, in each of the neighbor positions that we're iterating through. When we run it and test our print function, we're actually going to see that the uh, variance of each cell is pretty minimal. And we think this is based off how much sugar and spice agents start with and how much sugar and spice is in each cell. So you're not getting a lot of variation uh, from uh, uh, spot to spot. So we want to kind of double check to make sure it's doing what we think it's doing. All right, so we can add a couple other print functions in here. Um, just to make sure that we're collecting uh, uh, the sugar and spice from those patches uh, and that we're, those are being uh, included as part of our calculate welfare slash Cobb Douglas function. Uh, um, so just to do that, uh, I got a print statement that says uh, spice and then uh, the spice patch, which just to confirm that that is a spice object, right? Um, and then in the get sugar one, I'll add a slightly different print statement. All right, so in the sugar patch, we print, right, and then identify that it's sugar. Right, and then for this one, instead of returning uh, the object, I'll have it return uh, the actual amount. So I'll make sure I run the cell to store it in memory. And then I'll run this cell. Uh, and sure enough, uh, I'm getting spice objects and I'm getting uh, variation uh, for our uh, sugar amount. So let's do what we think. Uh, there is variance in the uh, uh, welfare list that's outputted. Right? It's just not very much because the agents are, are still consuming from their base amount of sugar and spice uh, in the landscape. So that concludes session 11. Whew, that was pretty involved. Uh, we wrote five helper functions, uh, but we did calculate the welfare uh, of each of our neighbors. So now the agents could decide which one's the closest one that will give them the most welfare. Uh, and then well, we'll conclude our sugar and spice move function where they actually move to the neighbor that will give them the maximum welfare. See you next time.